Okay, everyone, this is Anne Ray coming to you live from San Francisco, California. This is my student, Christopher, who also goes as Topher. And where are you, Atlanta? Uh, just north of Atlanta in Roswell. Okay, Roswell. All right. Um, so I've actually interviewed Christopher before, once before, but he's had some amazing strides since we last chatted. And a number of his fellow students want to study with him. So I'm going to give this opportunity to, for him to share pearls of wisdom, which I believe you said was just do what Anne said. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I've, you know, I've tried to reinvent the wheel several times, but I always end up back doing what the course has. And, and it's amazing. Thank you. Well, you're amazing for just doing it because I can't tell you it's really these are your results because you took the action and you had the faith to do it. I didn't do these things for you, for you. I don't do these things for my students. They're brave enough to do it themselves. Um, but it does help to have a roadmap that, that works. But let, let's go back in time for those of you who've never, you know, cause not everyone knows who you are or what this program is all about. So before you join making art, making money, what would you say your top two challenges were? Um, I didn't think I was good enough. You personally or your art? So this is a I really art. interesting question. Okay. Yeah, I didn't but think notice, what, notice how artists will say, they won't say, I didn't think my art was good enough. They say, I didn't think I was good enough, which is a much more damning statement if you think about it. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, I remember a couple of weeks into the course, um, sitting down on the floor in the living room and bursting into tears. I'm like, I, this is not what I'm meant to do. I'm, I'm crap. I'm frozen. I can't do it. Just total freak out. Um, and and it, it was what was kind of underneath was, all right, this is the time, Christopher, when the rubber meets the road. Like you've, you've invested in a course. There are other people for whom it's obviously working, right? So if this doesn't work for you, this is you, not the course. And I, I just froze. I just completely panicked. Mm. What do you think triggered that? You just, was there a moment that triggered that or? Um, was there a moment? Did, it, did you have like something going on at, at a belief in your head or? Oh, yeah. You, what was that? Yeah, so, uh, so absolutely. Um, well, it, it, it was that whole thing about, it, is my art good enough? Mm -hmm. And I realized that by signing up for the program, I had actually backed myself into a corner. Mm, so, okay. So now it's like uh, make it or break it time. Yeah. It's because it's all right failing if you're not doing anything about it. <laughs> yes. And this is what a lot of people are doing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, so that's okay because, you know, you didn't take a risk, but signing up oh. for the course, I was like, oh crap. Like now I'm in a program where I, I, I've spent money. I want to produce results. I'm talking to people for whom it's working. So, you, you know, get on it. And it, I, it was paralyzing for me for weeks. Wow. But yeah, I, I remember you did scream and kick for a bit, but then, but then fast forward, but before we go fast, I, well, so your challenge was, it sounds like a combination of things. You didn't think your art was good enough, but you also were just really riddled with self-doubt. Uh, yeah, very much. And, um, you know, my, my dad had, had just passed away at the time. I remember, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, you know about English people, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Their product is not emotion, okay? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and so I didn't grow up thinking that art was a thing anyone could do for a living, right? There, there was no support for that, even though I was always artistic, my entire family was. That's, that's a hobby. It's something you do, right? To try and do it for a living, that's stupid and irresponsible. Right. So there was all of that voice about, mm -hmm. all right, you're being irresponsible. Who do you think you are that you could do this? You're obviously not good enough. You're stupid. You're a da 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 and, you know, reading the book Code to Joy and, and working on the emotional stuff, it it all came up. Um, but it was absolutely time to deal with it. 
Um, and the last the last year has certainly been intense, and I've had to I've had to choose. Even when it's one of the things I've realized is um, discomfort means I'm doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. It means you're growing. Yeah, b being comfortable means I'm resting on my laurels, not trying hard enough. Um, and so there's been a, a great deal of discomfort this year as as I've stepped into having conversations, making requests of people, you know, and I was doing the prototype projects and, and that was working. And then, um, you know, I have this friend with a yoga studio and she let me put some stuff up in there and showed it around. Um, and a hotel saw it. And so they bought a giant piece out of there, which was amazing. And how much did that sell for? Uh, 25,000. And what did you sell prior to joining? How much? Uh, over the course of, over the Just, course no, of the, like life. the previous 12 months. So the tw oh, previous 12 months nothing. before you joined the program, yeah, nothing. you sold how much of your art? Zero. 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 Since you joined the program, would you mind sharing how what your art sales are looking like now total? Uh, 128,000. 128,000. Okay, everyone. What I want to put on full display right now is we're having two conversations, right? A lot of artists say, I don't want to know about that mindset stuff. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> But guess what? Your life is the story you're telling yourself about yourself. And your story was, I'm not good enough. Yep. I shouldn't be doing this. This is a hobby. And this yep. isn't something that I should pursue. And it's foolish. Okay, you change that story. You're still right. changing the story. And the result is in your checking account, right? It's $128,000. So it's a pretty good return on your investment. Yeah. You know, and and I am, I know I contacted you early to sign up for a second year, um, because that, I knew, that, like, yeah, I knew I was selling more art in the program than outside. So yeah, it was like a, you know, will I make the tuition back a second time? Duh, you know, an yeah. absolute belief by this point because I'd already done it. Right. Um, and the the last piece I did was something completely new for me. Right something I had never done before. And I, but suddenly I had permission to try stuff. Don't you feel braver once, oh, you, yeah. once you really understand your mission and you really understand that if you create more value above and beyond the art, you can charge more money. And once you understand that you don't need to be sleazy or salesy or pushy, as a matter of fact, it's not going to work if you do that, but you actually just need to guide inspiring conversations doesn't it free you to experiment and have a hell of a lot more fun yeah a and knowing that what i had done was working gave me the freedom to experiment so so the last piece i did had um ground up uh malachite powder and oh, nice and gold paint and glitter and pearls and all kinds of crazy stuff and it was koi fish and I, I got, saw that I, image. That was stunning. Yeah, yeah. And I got to the end and I'm like, holy crap. But it, for me, it felt like kindergarten because I'm covered in glue and stuff. Right. Yeah. And then the hotel that bought the other piece, they saw it and they're like, yeah, we want that. Like before it even got out of the house. They're like, yeah, we want that. It's crazy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's working and mm -hmm. there you go. So you've got other students who want to study with you right now and what advice would you give to them? So the, 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 the biggest thing I've learned is that I can trust myself. Yes. And now my conversations are really direct. Yes. Cause I'm, I'm standing in a, you know, I've learned so much talking to you because you're so clean and clear in your communication, which is amazing. And so when I'm talking to people, I'm, kind of black and white about it. This is the piece. This is what I charge. This is what it means. Da, da, da. I don't get emotional. I don't care. Um, I'm not attached. Right. Some will, some won't. So yeah. what? Next. Yeah. yeah. And and I have, it really doesn't affect me at all if someone says, oh, I don't like it. No worries. That's their, that's their privilege. Yeah. They can like it or not like it. I mean... 
this is the thing is people, artists take everything so personally. It's not personal. You know, um, you wouldn't wear every bit of fashion that comes down the runway. Doesn't mean that the designer is not a, a great designer. Doesn't mean that someone else wouldn't love it. It just, it, it art is in the eye of the beholder, period. What well, one of the things that happened on this last piece that I did, at the end of it, I was actually proud for the first time. No, oh, thank God. I actually I'm looked so at glad it to hear like, that. Oh, you should be proud. That was good. Yeah, of course. I mean, remember, you're your own boss. You're your own employee. So you got to motivate your employee, right? Yes. yes. You really do. You have to motivate them. And then the, the you know... The employee's got to do a good job. The boss has to do a good job. You really have to manage yourself in ways that I don't think other professionals have any idea how how much self-management we have to do as fine artists. Well, one of the other things that you've taught me and the course has taught me is that I am I am several kinds of employee. So Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm more than artist. one. Yes, exactly, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm the artist. I'm the accountant. I'm also the sales guy. Right. But you'll right. get to a place, Christopher, as you evolve and you develop systems that you'll start to be able to delegate sure. pieces of this, right? Like the bookkeeping yes. and all that good stuff. Like things like the first thing to go are the administrative tasks yes. because they're no fun. And, um, well, typically, unless you're like really enjoy it, if it sparks joy, then keep it. But <laughs> typically, that's got to go. The salesperson, you know, there's never really going to be anyone better than you. Right. And now that you know how to do it, it's not that hard. Yeah, well, it's, you know, relating to myself as an employee who is employed to create sales, that's a really different conversation from I'm selling, I'm trying to schlep my art right, right. or sell myself for heaven, yes. heaven forbid that's the worst notion it's the mo one of the most self-destructive unproductive notions that artists are carrying around in their head that they have to sell themselves you are not for sale of course you're not selling yourself right you don't have to sell yourself right and if you believe for a second that you're selling yourself you're going to feel in internally conflicted and it's not going to work and it's going to come across. You're going to feel you're going to come across as hesitant. You're going to come across as lacking in confidence and it won't work. That's why you've got to serve a mission that's greater than yourself. So it's not about you, right? Yeah. Let me answer, answer this question. I almost didn't join the making art, making money program because dot, 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 fill in the blank. Tell the truth. Because um, I, I thought it was a scam and I didn't trust it. Yes. Yeah. I'm, okay. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said this because tell me, first of all, I'm before I go into it, tell me more. Tell me why you thought it was a scam and why I'm a scammer. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm someone who signed up for a lot of online courses and mm -hmm. you know that I bought a website that cost me five or six grand. I do. I, I sold zip on. I of course, you did. of course you sold zip. You didn't know your niche. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I spent five grand on an art booth and paying to be in art shows. And, um, and I, I was kind of like, well, crap, you know, and, and it, it was just, none of those things worked. And I'm like, all right, this isn't going to work either. It's right. just like the others. Right. And, then it would, you and I had a conversation and I remember saying to you, I am perfectly happy to be a whore for my art. And you said, that's not required. No. And I'm like, oh, she actually understands this stuff. Do and you think I, it's required now? No, no, no. Of course not, at all. not. No. Such a silly, that's that. So that idea, I'm a whore for my art or I'm prostituting myself. You can trace that back to the underlying belief that you believe you have to sell yourself. Yes. Once exactly. you understand that you are not in the position of having to sell yourself, you can get rid of all those wrong-headed, very stifling and disrespectful ideas. They're gone. Yeah. 
they're gone. So I yeah. love that you thought it was a scam and you gave me money anyway. <laughs> I thought, you know, and we did a, sur this is such a common thing now because be it's a common thing, but if you, if, and so I actually surveyed my students in the interest of full transparency, my students have, rep I don't know what the poll says right now, but it was something like 51 or 41% of them thought it was a scam before, or might be a scam before they enrolled. That, I don't know if that says more about me or more about them, but what I think you included, but here's the thing, what I think what it is, is that I've identified 32 of the most common, ineffective, time-consuming, expensive as all get out and confidence crushing strategies that artists are handed. And of course they all fricking fail. So it makes perfect sense that when and if an artist ever arrives at my door, they don't, of course they don't believe anything is going to work because nothing has. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, it's been so good for me. I actually got one of my friends to join up and he is on, you know. How's he doing? The, yeah, yeah, he's doing brilliantly. He has good. already had one art event stroke appreciation party. Nice. I, I hope it's okay that I say the number, but he sold six grams worth of art. Woohoo! Amazing, right? Um, so, and, and, I remember in that conversation with you, the question you asked, do you believe that you could at least make your tuition back? Right. Right. And I knew that if I focused on art for a year, I could at least do that. I like right. I trusted myself and I trusted you that much. Um, and then when it started to happen, I was like, well, holy crap. Why uh, stop here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I, so, yeah. I've gotten so much, I've gotten so much braver. Good. You no, know? um, I, we, we mentioned the last time we talked about me going to a party and having a rolled up painting in the car. Cause I knew I could slip it out at the party. And once people see art, everything changes, right? right. Very different from being online and right. three commissions at that party. Just bang. Right. And I love, it's such a no, a low tech, it's a no tech way. And one of the things that a lot of fine artists are really spending a lot of time and wasting a lot of money with is an, the overuse of technology. Now I freaking love technology and there is a place for technology and you must master certain aspects of technology if you want to sell more of your art, yeah. but it does not have to overwhelm you. And it, and what I'm seeing is the tail is wagging the dog. Yes. People are spending enormous amounts of money on websites, e-commerce sites that of course they're not selling any art because they don't know their niche. And what that means is if you know your niche, it means who wants to, you know, who wants to buy your art, why they want to buy it and where and how to go find more people just like them. And I think you even asked me like, where sh should I build a site? I'm like, just go use Instagram stores. It's free. Yeah. Or shops, Instagram shops. Just go use yeah. that for now. You don't even need it right now. Yeah. Say, I mean, I just I saved all y'all a bunch of money. Okay. Just now. Seriously. Um, and I, one of the other great pieces of advice you gave me, you know, I, I had like 300 prints done. I know. And um, you pointed out that the effort in selling a print is the same as selling a piece of fine art. And so it's actually I, more effort. Yeah. So they are honest because Georgia, we're not allowed to burn anything right now. And there will be a bonfire. I promise. <laughs> Can I see a photo of it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I mean, literally, when we had that conversation, all of that went away. And since then, it's only been originals. Can and you explain? To, OK, so one of the things I tell. So I teach luxury marketing. OK. And and sales. And that means the affluent, okay, the affluent by art, right? And so the way they make buying decisions is very different. An affluent purse is not looking for a cheap print. It is easier to sell a $10,000 original or in your case, a $25,000 original than it is to sell a cheap print. Can you explain how in the hell did you wind up buying 300 reproductions and for what purpose? 
So, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a unique position because in my business, I have access to print equipment. Oh, okay. All right. So I was able to do them, but still all the supplies and the time and, you know, hiring people to produce that many for me, I, it was certainly in the thousands. Right. Um, and it's bec because so many people had said, oh, your art is expensive. Do something for people who don't want to spend that much. They're not your customer. Right. No, that's not your job. That's not your job. Right. Tiffany's does not have a line that they sell at Walmart. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a, what a colossal waste of time and injury mm -hmm. to their brand, if you imagine they did, right? Yeah. You are not your customer. If you, if you learn nothing from today's chat, you are not your customer. Okay. They make decisions differently. So it, let me ask you this one last question. If you, if someone was sitting on the fence and they were not sure about applying to enroll, and by the way, it, it in, admission is only available by application. Um, unlike all these other places where they'll gladly take your money, they'll gladly take your money. And oh, by the way, can I also mention, I'm seeing this chickadee talking about sell six figures of your art. And I'm like, no one can guarantee that. So I want to make sure everyone is clear that Christopher is Christopher. These are his results. They may or may not be your results. You might get less results. You get may get more. It just depends. But if anyone has given you a number, that's called an implied income claim. And it's a violation of the Federal Trade Commission. Please don't pay attention to people who are making those kinds of promises. If they're sharing what their students have done, that's one thing. But it's still, you need to, I need to be really clear. Uh, you may or may not reach these results. You may get less, you may get more. That said, if someone was sitting there, maybe they think it's a scam. <laughs> they, I've paid you a handsome sum. Uh -huh. <laughs> what would you honestly say to them? If, if you want to take your art seriously, then to, to get into a structured program that supports you in doing that, I think is a really smart thing. And out of all the ones that I've done and wasted money on, mm -hmm. this is the only one that's produced results for me. And it's produced results in, in way more than art. It's, it, you know, I feel differently. I behave differently. Um, and you, you know, pointing out that art is emotion and working on both of those at the same time has really changed things. And so I think, I think this is the right course. And I know that sounds cheesy, but I, it's as an artist, as someone who's sensitive and emotional, it's worked. So, yeah. Right. And when you say you you feel differently and you behave differently. How, what does that look like? How is it different? Um, how do you, how do your, how do your, how have your feelings changed and how have your, how has your behavior changed? So, um, the, the $25,000 poppy painting, um, was not priced and the hotel saw it. And they said, how much is it? And all the old thoughts were there, right? Mm -hmm. And my palms were going to sweat and all that was going to happen. And I just looked them straight in the eye and said, oh, this one's 25000 mm -hmm. Didn't even flinch. Right. And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. And inside I'm like, holy crap. But, but the ability to do it without flinching, that's really new behavior. And to not feel like I had somehow cheated them or defrauded them or taken too much. It actually, I you bought another one. <laughs> yeah. It, well, yeah. And, and, it, but I was actually able to really stand in my value and feel good about it, which is amazing. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's okay if that, those little gremlins are going yak, 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 in the back, yeah. just let them be. You just ignore them and do the right thing anyway. Yes which is to ask for the price that you deserve. Yes. Period. No discounts. Yeah. No 
discounts, anyone, no discounts. When you discount your art, you're signaling you're not very confident. And you devalue your art immediately and you tarnish your reputation because it looks like your prices don't have any integrity, right? It's awesome. Okay, so you, obviously you feel more confident. You feel, I feel like you feel more inspired than before. Yeah. And it seems you've also made some new friends in the community. Yeah, very much. I, I got a call um, a few weeks ago from a local gallery and uh, they were like, we've seen your art. We want to talk to you about representing you. And I said, actually, I'm not looking for representation. Is that good or what? Right. I mean, b before that was, that was all I thought I ever wanted, you know? Now explain to people who are listening, why did you say no to the art gallery? Because they are not specifically going to represent me. I'm just going to be one artist in there. Mm -hmm. They will represent or, or put the most effort into whichever artist is selling the most. And I will never get to meet my buyers. I won't know who they are. So I can't develop a relationship. I can't develop um, them as a collector over time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and why does that matter? Why does it matter that you can't, if you went through an art gallery or an art representative that you wouldn't be able to connect with your own collectors? Um, Why does it, that matter? It's, yeah, it's two things, actually. One, I am so much more fulfilled working directly with someone and creating a piece that's about, that's really about them. And it, it's a co-creation. And that is, that's amazing. Um, but secondly, meeting them, having them be happy and satisfied with the project and hopefully buy more art later, but then also showing the piece to their friends. Mm -hmm. And so it begins to, it begins to snowball. Right. Um, and so, yeah. And so what happens is when you have a relationship with your collectors and you have a solid referral strategy, that means you can sell about 80% more of your art and keep 100% of your money. Think about that math for a minute, everyone. That's a staggering statistic. And I'm going to tell you why. When someone is referred to you, or let's say you're referred to someone else, like a small shop or a restaurant, you are 82% more likely to buy and spend more money. And that's why the relationship is so key. Real relationships equal revenue. And your art representative or your collector is going to block you, even though in many states, it's actually illegal for them to withhold your collector's contact information. So for all you representatives out there doing that, shame on you. Shame on you doesn't belong to you. You don't have any investment in the inventory. You only consign it. You haven't paid for a damn thing. So you got no right to block artists from their own customers' information. Can you imagine any business? You own a business. Can you imagine any business that would exist if it didn't have its customers' information? Yeah, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that's what they're proposing. So that's why I'm so glad you said, no, thank you. Mm. Ta-ta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, 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 and it felt, it felt great and true and authentic. and yeah, yeah, exactly. Nothing personal, but not interested. This has been great. I hope all the students listen to this chat and just work the, trust the process, everybody, and trust yourself. And even when it feels uncomfortable, I think is the moral to this story Absolutely. because it's going to feel uncomfortable. But it's a lot less uncomfortable than enduring the same crap that isn't working and not getting the results that you want and that you deserve. That's yeah. way more uncomfortable. And you got a lifetime sentence of that if you don't make a change. Right? Yeah. So proud of you. So glad we could chat. Yeah. Thanks, and so. yeah, someday maybe we'll meet in person. Yes. I love San Francisco. So yes. All right, then. Thanks again for taking the time out of your busy day to yeah, chat absolutely. and share your story with everyone. I appreciate it. Cool.
Thank you. Bye. Bye.